Hello Year 8 and welcome to your first lesson in your unit on population development and globalisation. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at population growth and more specifically world population growth. So please take a second to write down your title, our numbers are growing fast. At any point in this video you can pause in order to allow you to complete the tasks. Your learning objectives today are to familiarise yourself with some basic key terms for the new unit, to be able to describe some past changes on, in population, and also to try and predict population growth in the future. Now, as with all of your lessons, you can either complete your lesson by typing onto the PowerPoint that's been uploaded to Satchel One, you can complete it on a Word document and make sure you label each task clearly, or you can complete on lined paper or plain paper and upload a photo of your work to Satchel One also. If you're having any problems with uploading your work, please email your teacher directly. So now we can start and I'd like you to think about this starter. I would like you to try and explain the key words in your own words. So give your own explanation, your own definition of the terms population, and overpopulation. So you can pause the video now and try and write down what you think you know about population and overpopulation. So hopefully you have an idea that when we're talking about population, we're talking about numbers of people. We're talking about the number of people either within a place. We could have the population of Bishop Chaloner, which I believe is about 1,600 students. Um, or we could have the population of London, or we could have the population of the UK, or we could have the population of the world. So the number of people living in a specific place. Overpopulation, you've probably worked out, is when there are maybe too many people in an area. So if Bishop Challenger School was overpopulated, it would probably mean that there weren't enough chairs for people to sit on. It might mean that there's not enough food in the canteen. It might mean that there's not enough space for us to move around the corridors. So overpopulation um, isn't always a bad thing, but some people will be able to think about some of the negatives associated with having too many people within a place. And we're going to explore the impacts of overpopulation in uh, greater detail next lesson. So to start, what we would like you to do is read the information um, on the slide. So underneath where it says our numbers are growing fast. And I'd like you to try and complete the sentences in the grey box in your own words. So it says people appeared on Earth about and you need to try and use the information on the slide to figure out when people first started to appear on earth and then also how those populations increased over time so hopefully you can see that today there are over seven billion people living on earth and obviously that is still set to rise but we're going to start thinking about well, when did the population grow so much and why did it grow and you can see there it says, how does the population rise so fast? And there's a little example here of Bo and Ella. OK, so Bo and Ella in 1744 got married and had four children. All of those children had children of their own. So those four children had a further 18 children between them. 16 of the 18 children had their own children and that made 76. So what you can see is that just from two people, OK, from 1750 to 1820, there was a huge increase in numbers of that family. So the bottom part, OK, doesn't sound very pleasant, but it says, but what about the, the deaths? Every year, millions of humans die, unfortunately, but the population still keeps rising. So this must mean that more babies are being born. So the birth rate is higher than the death rate. So more children, more babies are being born every year than people are dying, which must mean that the population grows year on year. Now, the extension there says, is the growing population of the world a good thing? So there are arguments for both increasing populations and also um, there's arguments against it. So I'd like you to have a think and I'd like you to explain your opinion in your own words. 
Okay, as in geography, we always like to look at data. We like to look at graphs. And this is a really important graph. And it's probably one you'll see a lot over the next few years of geography lessons. So this graph shows world population. Okay, so you can look through from A to I, you can read each of these boxes and start thinking about what this is showing. So along the X axis, okay, which is along the bottom, it's showing the year. So it goes back to 10,000 BC. And up the Y axis, it's showing the world population in billions. Okay, so on the left hand side here, it shows the world population in billions. And here it gives some specific dates of when world population increased by a billion. OK, so we can see that one billion people were living on Earth in 1804 and that increased to two billion in 1927. And as we go up, we can see that actually increases much quicker. There's much more rapid population increase after the Industrial Revolution. And especially if we look, it went from 5 billion um, to 6 billion, okay, from 1987 to 1999, okay, so that is obviously only 12 years it took to increase by a billion. So that's a huge, huge jump. Um, and it's something that we, is really important to us as geographers, as it can lead to different types of impacts. So when we're looking at graphs, we need to think about what's the general trend. Well, the general trend here is that there's been an increase. OK, so there has been an increase in population. That's very, very easy to see. But if we're looking at specific patterns, we can see that really there was no increase in population. There's very, very little increase. Um, until around the Industrial Revolution, so started maybe the Roman times, um, about 43 AD, started to increase a little bit, so that's G, and then the Industrial Revolution, so the Industrial Revolution started in the United Kingdom around 1750, okay, 1760, so that is when population really started to grow, and then world population has continued to grow, and there was an even um, more recent population explosion around the 1950s too. So what I would like you to do is study the graph and write four sentences to describe the shape of this graph. Now you can give a general pattern, okay, so general pattern. You can then try and also give some data. So for example, in 10,000 BC, there were just you know, very, very few people. There were three million people living on Earth. OK, so use the information on the slide to try and give some data, but also give some of the general patterns that happened. You can also try and give some odd ones out. We like to give an anomaly as well, as you know. Um, so you can always try and find something that doesn't quite fit the pattern. All right, so maybe the rapid increase around 1760 didn't quite fit the general pattern before. So write four sentences about this graph. And then your extension is to say how many years, work out how many years it took to go from 1 billion to 2 billion. So we know that it went from 1804, 1 billion, and then 2 billion in 1927. So can you work out how many years were between 1804 and 1927. And then how many years did it take to go from 3 billion to 6 billion? OK, so hopefully you'll see that population has started to increase much more rapidly in more recent times. And just to end, your plenary this week is to try and predict what will happen to the world's population in the future. Do you think that world population can just keep on rising like this for the that like it did for the last 200 years? Do you think there's anything that might stop the world's population rising? Do you think that will be just a natural um, thing or do you think humans might have to intervene? I'd like you to try and summarise what you think will happen in the future in your own words. And that's the end of your first lesson on population. Please make sure you check Satchel 1 in order to access all of the other resources available.